morning and um, thank you very much for the invitation to be here this morning. I'm very conscious that I am standing between yourselves and your coffee at this stage, so I'm going to go through these slides as quickly as possible. Um, so we have, uh, the Tusla Educational Welfare Service has three strands under its remit. One would be our, is our, our statutory strand, which is around, I suppose, um, ensuring every child's right to an education. And in, in some cases, that unfortunately does mean prosecution for parents. But we're very conscious that really, in a lot of cases, it is a last resort to, to prosecute a parent for not sending their child to school because often it is a capacity issue. And all, I have never met a parent, and I'm sure people who work on the front line with parents will agree with me, who didn't want what was best for their child. But sometimes it's, it's, you know, it gets to a stage where parents are just not able to get the child into school. And often, especially as the child gets older, it becomes practically impossible. So what we're trying to do is looking at the other two strands within our service, which is the one being the homeschool liaison um, scheme, and I'm here to talk about that today, and the school completion programme. So the, homes, the school completion programme is a very targeted response uh, to support those children at risk of dropping out of school. And um, it is a TUSLA funded programme, but it is quite targeted on particular children. The homeschool liaison scheme is an early intervention and prevention program. So I suppose I, be, I began by talking about the statutory because that is, even though there is a very much a supportive element to our statutory arm, uh, we see early intervention and prevention as being so important. And we see families and the capacity of parents to support their child as being absolutely critical. So I think, I, I suppose, in my view anyway, uh, the homeschool liaison scheme was one of the most pro progressive decisions by government, uh, by the Department of Education here in Ireland. Uh, the late Dr. Concepta Conaghy acknowledged that parents, as the primary educators, were best placed to support their child's um, educational outcomes. So the HSCL scheme is a, it's, um, it's a central component of the Department of Education and Skills DESH program. It's very unique. I think it's the only one of its kind in, in Europe um, where a teacher is released from teaching um, duties up to a period of five years. So it began in 1990 and I think before then um, you know, parents were seen as their place being outside of the school gate. I think that parents were, were there to collect their children, drop them off, and I think the teacher was seen, and this is certainly the case when I began my teaching career, as the experts in the classroom. And their job was education, and the parents' job was to look after the child and support the child outside of school. Um, this was very, it was a real climate change in 1990 when Dr. Concepta Conaghy um, campaigned to have the value of parents in their child's education brought to the centre of, of our schools. And I suppose the idea of, for, from the point of the homeschool liaison, it's a teacher from within a school staff, it's in, in a DESH school, who is released from teaching duty in order to support educationally disadvantaged parents to engage more with the school, to see the school as a support and not somewhere that they get a phone call when their child is in trouble. And I began, when I, I worked as a homeschool liaison and I saw the anxiety and the upset on parents' faces when I was sitting with them in their home and they saw the school phone number coming up on their mobile phone and the fear and anxiety that that created. And I think with the HSCL scheme, and I think we have a few of our HSCL coordinators here today, um, it is around breaking down those barriers and really trying to, it's an outreach from the school where a teacher from their child's school is actually getting into his or her car, 
driving to the home, sitting down with the parent in the kitchen and saying, how can we support you? And also encouraging that parent to come into the school and start engaging in programs within the school. So it's not just something that is there for their child, but also for them. Um, the, the focus is preventative, as, as I've said already, and it is to improve educational outcomes for children, but it's through working with parents and the, the salient adult in the child's life. Um, the DES is responsible and, is, and funds the release of teachers into the role of HSCL for, for up to a period of five years. Um, and you know, the value of this is not just around, I think, outreaching from the school to the parent, but it's also about being an agent of change within the school. So this teacher has walked the talk. They have had experience in teaching within their school. They have the respect and they know their colleagues. And they are an agent of change in terms of highlighting the barriers that some of our marginalised families face when they're trying to access education. Um, I remember as a young teacher being in the staff room and hearing some of my colleagues say, oh sure, it's the parents you want to see at the parent-teacher meeting who don't bother to turn up. And I didn't know or think much about that at the time, but I knew what they meant. It, they meant that the parents of the children who were doing really well in school actually attended all of the parent-teacher meetings. And the parents of the children who were maybe um, being suspended or parents were being called in constantly because there were behavioural issues or the child wasn't uh, completing homework, they didn't turn up to parent-teacher meetings. I wonder why that was. You know, I sat in a hall this size and I saw teachers at tables all around the room and this now is going back quite a while because it's a long time since I was a, a, a young teacher, but I saw them and I saw the parents coming in and the parents whose children were doing well were skipping and hopping from one teacher to the next and delighted to hear all of the positive news. And then I saw other parents and they, were, they would have been, you know, those few parents who actually were brave enough to come in knowing that their child was not doing well in school. And the first thing I very quickly realised was the importance of acknowledging that those parents, I, I would say to that, that mother or father or both, you know what, you're fantastic to be here this evening and you're a credit to your child because I know that John or Mary has been in a lot of trouble and I know that I could see them as they walked from one teacher to the next becoming more and more demoralised. And then we wondered why are they not turning up to parent-teacher meetings? You know, so I think thankfully that culture has changed and I think that the teacher education training colleges now are very much um, promoting uh, the fact that we have to try and be positive to engage our parents who are facing barriers and challenges. Um, and also, but at the same time we have a long way to go because, you know, educational disadvantage is an elective module in a lot of colleges. A lot of teachers come from, you know, middle class backgrounds or backgrounds where their parents valued education and sent them to school. And it's very difficult then to put yourself in the shoes of someone who hasn't had that experience. And children who are facing barriers where parents may not have had the, um, you know, the, the value in education modelled to them. Um, so really, I suppose... This is about breaking down barriers between education and the home and also acknowledging the parent as the primary educator. And from the point of view of the HSCL coordinator, they go back into the classroom after five years or they become principals. Many, many coordinators become uh, deputy principals or principals and you can imagine then the change in culture of that school because now these teachers have gone into these homes, they've sat down with these parents, they've built relationships and they have seen, you know, at first hand the challenges for a lot of our families who haven't been lucky or fortunate enough to, to fit the system that we have at the moment. 
Um, so in terms of the oversight of the scheme, as, as I said at the beginning, we have Tusla um, EWS is responsible, has operational responsibility for the scheme and we work very closely with the Department of Education in terms of, um, I suppose, directing the, the scheme. Uh, now, a lot of this is very uh, much about statistics and the numbers, and I, I believe, Mary, that you're sending out these slides, so I'm not going to dwell uh, on this too much. I'm going to skip on to the next one. Yeah, uh, just I've already covered this uh, full time. Um, so a classroom teacher is released. Now, we often are asked, why does it have to be a teacher? Because teachers are quite expensive resources and to release them from the classroom for five years, you know, perhaps um, community worker, social care worker, family support worker could do the same thing. Um, I don't think that it would have the same success because remember, the teacher is from within the school and the teaching community. They know the children and they know the parents and they know the teachers. So they're changing um, mindsets and I think um, the, the perception of, of some of our parents from the inside and then they're visiting the homes and they're changing hopefully the perception of some of our parents about school and teachers as well and becoming, um, creating a really positive working partnership between both. So um, the scheme operates in, in the spirit of partnership with parents, uh, encourages a whole school approach and visiting families is key. It's about making that effort to go out where a parent feels most comfortable in their own home and, and um, talking to them and building that relationship. Um, they identify the learning needs of the family and they actually, the coordinators then organise courses for parents. Um, they also refer, they, they build up relationships, it's homeschool community liaison, so they, the coordinator builds up a relationship, gets to know other family support services so that they are in a really good place to tell the parent, you know, of the other supports in the community give them the information and support them in referring into those um, services. And one of those would be our own uh, practice model, the TUSLA practice model for prevention, partnership and family support, which is MEHL. And that is where you bring all of the community services around that are relevant to support a family going through crisis and working very collaboratively with the parents. Inclu that includes the school, of course. Uh, the key areas of work, um, so we've got home visitation, literacy, numeracy, science. Remember, these are teachers, so, you know, it's about really as well keeping learning and, and literacy and numeracy at the centre of, of what we're doing. Um, supporting transitions because it's the most, um, it is the most vulnerable time for children when, when they're transitioning from primary to post-primary. But now we've also restated the role of the HSCL coordinator around early years transition because again it's all about early intervention and prevention and getting in there when the parent is best placed to support their child and to I suppose really um, you know instill good good that practice you know because sometimes um, poor, poor attendance is a learned behavior and parents may think when the child is very young it's not going to matter but in actual fact it really does and punctuality, if they're, if they're late for school in the mornings, they're missing out on all of that socialisation with their friends. So we're looking now as well at very much early intervention and home schools, working with preschool parents and building that relationship even before they come into junior, the child comes into junior infant, infants. Um, so the SCP intake framework, again, the SCP programme is working with children who are at risk of early school leaving and the home school and the, EW, the educational welfare officer, they work very closely around the intake framework and referrals into the scheme so that the parent is aware of the supports the child is getting and of course has to, has to give permission for it. And these are the, I think I did very well to get through all of that, not too bad, not too bad. Um, so um, these are some useful links and um, 
I, as I say, you know, I think you're getting the slides, and thank you very much. And thank you.